Hey folks, it's uh, the hosts of Nerd Overload, Sam, Cody, and Samantha. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're coming at you before the start of the actual show to talk about something something kind of something and important real and <laughs> real and and serious and not not usually within our uh, wheelhouse so as a show we typically try to steer clear of real world events and making uh, political making statements. political statements although this is arguably not even a political statement <laughs> this it's it's this see that's just it this isn't a political no. statement but yeah. There are people that will take it that way. A lot of times we have to stay neutral on things due to the fact that we are on a non-for-profit public radio station. We have to stay neutral. This message is coming to you for our podcast only, folks, so that we can be a little more real because we feel that this is a strong enough issue that we can't be indecisive on it. And I am talking about the uh, murder of George Floyd and the uh, number of protests for black rights and a uh, person of color rights happening across the nation currently. The world is a very different place than it was a week ago for a lot of our listeners, or for also for a lot of our listeners, I think all that's really happened is this has underlined a sentiment that has already been prevalent in their lives. And I don't want to put words in your guys' mouth so jump in whenever okay. you'd like well, yeah you're nailing it okay <laughs> yeah we here at nerd overload do not condone racism absolutely not in, any, yeah, no, in yeah. any way shape or form we are very strongly behind uh the black lives matter movement we want to be allies in any way in we can. any and every way possible i i mean we are middle-aged white folk <laughs> but we are doing the best we can this is a very serious matter, and whether you are part of the protests, peaceful or otherwise, or if you are able to contribute to any funds or um, like the bail charities, funds, the bail or funds, the, or just uh, Black Lives Matter. Yes, the, yes, we, NAACP. Is that the right or just acronym? Support. Yeah, that's it. Okay. N- NAACP. Or just support black owned businesses. Yes. Yeah. That's something as simple so, as that. Yeah. yeah. Every little bit helps. This is a systemic issue that needs to end. And we're going to do everything in our power to try to bring more focus to creators of color and things of that nature. But yeah, we just wanted to take a minute and bring this to everyone's attention. If you are in any position to support any of those in any way, shape, or form, please, by all means. We we have, all of us here have, in various forms, and uh, we will continue yeah. to. We just wanted to make it very clear where we stand, so there's no question. There is zero zero <laughs> question at all where we are in in this. This is, a, again, a very serious issue, not usually something we talk about. <laughs> but it would be... It would be almost dangerous to not... Yeah, that, exactly. That the right way to put it. You know, being silent is... Almost as, bad. Almost, almost as bad. as bad. It's as, almost as, yeah. as as bad as as being implicit in in these things. So um, so anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get back to the funny ha-has and um, enjoy the show. Folks. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Yeah. Thanks. You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to the brand new Super Sloppy Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show with extra gack, extra goo, and all your favorite green slime. I'm Cody. I'm Sam. And I'm Samantha. Oh, we have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, We have a bunch of news to go over, but first, let's talk about some things we have been checking out. And then the physical challenge. And then the physical challenge, yeah. (laughs) Can't wait to shove my hand up that giant, gross nose. (laughs) Let's talk, you know what, let's talk about uh, uh, Double Dare for a minute, because... (laughs) 
<laughs> I have very fond memories of Double Dare. I I just on YouTube watched an hour and a half long <laughs> oh, documentary excellent. on Double Dare. Oh, a documentary. Okay, cool. It is actually very good. Uh, it's a the channel's called Pop Arena, and he does this series called Nick Knacks, where he's going uh, by release date doing a documentary on every show nickelodeon has ever released from the beginning oh wow that is crazy and he finally (laughs) has gotten to double dare which is pretty far in but like the first show aside from you can't do that on television that is like this is what nickelodeon is yeah (laughs) but man i loved double dare when i was a kid oh yeah i i watched it quite a bit yeah between that and um legends of the hidden temple those were the two to uh, game show, adventure show things. Nick, Ar- yeah. I like Nick Arcade a lot, obviously. Well, sure. Nick Arcade yeah. was the good one. Actually, didn't watch a whole lot of Nick Arcade. but uh, Those kids could not play video games. No. <laughs> they put them in front of those arcade machines, and it's like they'd never seen one before. Yeah, I watched, there was a um, defunct TV, defunct land, the um, Kevin Perger, I think is the guy's name. Yeah. He did one on uh, Nick Arcade, and yeah, those kids were just terrible <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking about double there yeah mark double there summers. yeah a cool guy mark summers <laughs> his ocd is way overstated yeah even he himself has said it wasn't that bad i was i just got anxious sometimes i wasn't even diagnosed for the whole show's run yeah so people made a big deal out of nothing just, I guess because it's just a good story. It's, it's just a wild story. It's an interesting wild story. Yeah. It's one, it's one of those kind of urban legend things about, oh, did you hear about the host of Double Dare? How he couldn't shake people's hands and other non-factual things. Yeah. It just got blown. It got way blown out of yeah. proportion is the word I was trying yeah, to think that's, of. Yeah. 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 He's not, he's not Howie Mandel. No, he's not to that <laughs> level yet. <laughs> there. I want him to host Double Dare. See how that goes. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that it had, it came back two other times. I remember Double Dare two thousand. I remember Double Dare two thousand. Yeah, I, I would watch that when it was on. Too. There was a there was a third. Yes, twenty eighteen. They did a, really. They just called it Double Dare. Oh wow! And they brought it back with a host that was some some YouTube girl who oh. actually seemed like she was fine at it. And they mm-hmm. also had Mark Summers just like there. Oh, sitting cool. at a desk off to the side like okay yeah that's cool yeah i uh well i guess if it came back in 2018 we're cord cutters so we don't really have yeah. the cable so yeah that makes sense that we wouldn't know about it uh what was that other game show uh sh- that they did the uh with the aggro crag guts guts, guts yes dun, 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 you gotta dun, win a, a piece of that radical rock yeah <laughs> <laughs> That, that might have been the longest YouTube video I've ever watched. That, oh, really? That wasn't just like a stream of some crap that I was half paying attention to. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's totally worth watching if you've ever had any sort of interest in Double Dare and like how how it works and how they came up with the different obstacle course things. Physical and, challenge or whatever. Yeah. yeah. No, that's they, cool. They started like really simple and dumb. Like, hey, find a thing in a bag, a big old container. Find an action figure in a big old container of cereal. Like, that's real hard. <laughs> like, like any kid doesn't have experience pulling a toy out of cereal. Oh, everybody is an expert at that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. Um, we'll have to, I'll have to check that out. That seems, that sounds really, really neat. But he's got a Kickstarter going right now, too, oh, for a book based on all hmm. the the Nickelodeon shows he's covered. Oh, right on. Right on. That's There's cool. There's some weird ones, too, that I don't even remember ever being on there. Yeah, like like what? Oh, like some Canadian uh, sitcom about kids in a... Uh, like a community center? Community center, yeah. I forget what it was called, but I'm like, I Is don't it, remember this at all. Does it have a mannequin that comes to life? No, it's not. It's not today's it's special. It's not today's special. Okay. I think there is an episode on today's special. Okay. Though. Because I, I have very fond, <laughs> very vivid memories of watching today's special as a kid because they played it on PBS growing up. It was Sesame Street, Eureka's Castle, today's special. Then they would play two <laughs> Batman 66 episodes back to back. There's a lot of old anime. like Really? Because part of their, their thing at the time when they first started getting animation was like, oh, this is world 
animation. Oh yeah, okay. That's why they had Danger Mouse was because it's a British it's show, a, right? And that okay. was actually a big hit. For <laughs> and I remember watching Danger Mouse. I, I vaguely Danger remember Mouse. Danger Mouse. I know that uh, it was uh, Ralph Bakshi, right? No. What am I thinking then? I'm thinking of the the Mighty Mouse reboot. Yeah. Was Ralph Bakshi. Danger okay. Mouse Danger Mouse was, was like the, the British barely, spy. Yeah. Kind barely of thing. animated. Okay, yeah. uh, That's it, yeah. Yeah. It was like a British Rocky and Bowinkle kind of. Thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, they had there's like an. A Bell and Sebastian, which is like about a kid and a big white dog, and it's cl- very clearly an anime. Wow, yeah, I don't, I don't recall that at all. Uh, the little bits that was one I remember watching. Okay. They talk about how uh, Nickelodeon started as Pinwheel, yeah, and Columbus. Yes, they they go into in depth about actually Columbus when they had like this weird cable service that was interactive. Yeah, yeah. And this is where, that's where Pinwheel, the show that begat Nickelodeon, came from. I forget the name of that cable service now. Cube? It was a cube. I think it was cube. called Cube. Oh, okay, yeah. It was actually, it was a really interesting concept. It was, it was cable TV that had a big old remote that you could push buttons to, like, live vote for things. Oh, and, wow. And there there was, like, interactive TV shows. Oh, that's really cool. It's, it's a lot of stuff now they would do with, like, Twitter. Oh, okay, sure. But, but you yeah. could just do it right there in front of your TV with your remote in your cable line. Yeah. No, that's 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 awesome. Way ahead of its time. Yeah, I knew I knew a little bit about that. I I guess I hadn't I didn't know how interactive it was, but I knew a little bit about it, the whole, the whole thing. I knew it started in Columbus. Yeah. They they would have like like public access style like discussion shows where people would weigh in on things with their remotes during the shows. That's really cool. But Nickelodeon spawns from that from columbus so you know, yeah ohio <laughs> well i'll tell you what i can go ahead and do my check them out real quick i haven't done a whole lot despite having two weeks to do um my main check them out was a uh, migraine that i had for four uh, for four days but i'm not going to talk about that instead do not recommend do not recommend that is a that is a uh what did we call? We called a, a non check them out, like a reverse check them out an once. Seal of approval. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, uh, the one thing that I I really kind of checked out uh, the other night actually, I watched the Vin Diesel film Bloodshot, one of the <laughs> last films to be in American movie theaters. <laughs> the oddly la- enough, the last film ever made. <laughs> Oscar contender Bloodshot because <laughs> no seriously because to be an Oscar contender you the one stipulation is you have to be shown in a theater. <laughs> this year there has been almost no movies in theaters. So there's a very good <laughs> Bloodshot could very easily be an Oscar award winner <laughs> which is terrifying. So <laughs> So Bloodshot is a pretty stock standard action schlock movie about a guy who has nanites in his blood, has has all of his blood replaced with nanites and is basically an unkillable super soldier. The twist is he's constantly, his brain is constantly reset and his memories are tampered with to serve the... Uh, science lab that he is unwittingly oh. working for. He, he's null the ultimate soldier from Metal Gear. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so he, every time he gets reset, the uh, he gets a memory of someone killing his wife. And it's a different face each time. So he goes on an unkillable killing spree. So they, they incept his, his desire to kill somebody... Yes. Basically. Yes. <laughs> and they they allude to he has been going through the exact same pattern for five years. The exact same. <laughs> they had it down to a script like they uh, the first the first pass through. Everything seems super legit. They they talk about the twist in the trail in the trailers. They kind of ruin the twist there. So I'm not spoiling anything. But the second pass through, you get a little more insight into all the people that are working for the company and how they're all just so bored because he just does the exact same thing every single time without fail because he is action man (laughs) and he does action thing. And this movie is about him breaking the cycle, essentially pretty standard. It's a little bit of Wolverine, a little bit of Groundhog's Day, (laughs) a lot of bit of Vin Diesel. The interesting thing, though, the it's directed by a guy named Dave Wilson 
is a first time director. Before this, he directed uh, video game trailers for like huh. Elder Scrolls and cinematic trailers, that sort of thing. And there are some really, really interesting visuals. It is the effects for the money that they spent. I'm, and I mean, this movie, it's not going to make its money back because of the whole yeah, not, no movies everything. Are. No movies are. <laughs> It wasn't going to make it. It was going to break even anyway. It was kind of a throwaway kind of thing. But there are some legitimately neat looking visuals, especially for a first time director. Some of it is very video gamey, but there is an entire sequence that takes place in a uh, a big, long overpass tunnel. And uh, Vin Diesel action man crashes a semi truck full of flour to block the path of these cars this convoy of cars and it's all done practical. Like there's no CG in it. That's all practical effects with like wire work and stuff like that. And it's a lot of clouds and the glow of blue from the uh, nighttime out outdoors, reflecting off of the flower and red reflecting off of the fire and the gunshots and Vin Diesel's dumb glowing chest. (laughs) And it's very striking. It's very, very cool looking. They kind of overdo it with like the throw a punch and it slows down extreme. They do that through almost the entire movie. (laughs) But I would say it's in red box right now. It's worth a buck 75 a night to, to watch it. I wouldn't buy it, but it's, it's worth it just for the visuals, just to see. Plus, the plucky comic relief character is Winston from New Girl, which oh, is a show, yeah. which I guess is something I could talk about. I finally started watching New Girl. It's I'm. A, it's a good show. Yeah, it's it's good. I I, I kind of like it. It was it's a little plucky and a little bit cringy for my taste sometimes, but it's a good show. But anyway, he's really funny in it, and Vin Diesel has at least the slightest shred of a personality outside of <laughs> I am action man I must do action at all times Punch robot. <laughs> yeah but no there's like a really cool visual thing where one of the turns out it's one of the bad guys he's a real cocky jerk and he always takes joy in shutting off all of Vin Diesel's bio systems except for his ears and then tells him exactly what's ha- what's been going on and then resets his brain and this guy's always eating something or always has candy or protein shakes or something. And at one point when he's doing the talk, he has Vin Diesel lying on this surgical bench and he takes a piece of gum out, sticks it under the table. And it's a cool visual thing because there is like five years worth of gum <laughs> that is stuck up underneath this table that he's also been in the loop and he's been doing the same thing for five years. And it's just kind of a neat visual. Again, v- the movie's more flash than the substance. It's a dumb action movie, but it's worth it's worth checking out. And it's kind of interesting. They the I guess the theatrical had a post credit sequence that was going to tie into a wider shared cinematic universe because Bloodshot is a comic book character. He's from Vi- Valiant Comics. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they had a they had a teaser for uh, Harbinger, which is another series about a, a psychic guy that is collecting other psychics throughout the world to create like a giant massive think tank and one psychic going up against them. Um, The DVD does not have that. Instead, the movie is tagged with a bunch of bloopers. (laughs) So the cinema, the Valiant comic cinematic universe may not be happening. It, it, It was taken down before it could even start. Yeah. Even more so than the universal monsters cinematic universe <laughs> yeah although i guess i could mention this is kind of a half check because i watched a couple of clips from it didn't watch the whole thing because i i can't i can't sit through it there is another bloodshot film <laughs> that came out the same year wow. it was for youtube only <laughs> done by the bat in the sun people the the folks that did like the superpower beat down like two pop culture fight people that do a badly choreographed fight scene paid for by Valiant Comics. Bloodshot is in that as well, played by Jason David Frank. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So you can look that one up for, up, up for free. That is called Ninjak versus the Valiant comic. Ninjak, of course, is a British ninja that is also James Bond. That is also Batman. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
With a great, with a cool name, just the coolest name. Yeah, he's a ninja, so nin ninjack. It's as bad as the ninja in Killer Instinct. What is his <laughs> name? Nin Ninjago. Ninjago, <laughs> like the no, Lego j- toy. No, Jago. Jago, Jago. Is, yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't make any sense. It's like what? How is that ninja? It's not. It doesn't even sound Japanese. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> They work rare's working with Nintendo at that point. They could have called them up and been like, "Hey, what's a good ninja name?" <laughs> Cuz we don't have one. <laughs> uh. Well, we've watched at least a fair share of movies. Um let's get the Lego movie 2 out of the way cuz okay. it's probably my least favorite of the bunch of movies we watched. It was fine. I know it wasn't bad by any stretch. It was entertaining. I mean, I didn't get bored. Mhm. But it also just wasn't as good as the original. It just wasn't as clever. It the song they were they put like three or four songs in it and they weren't that good. Mm. And also why <laughs> the original movie had one song in it and it wasn't it was just kind of like a background like quick thing. It wasn't like a musical yeah. song. Huh. But this one kind of I guess tries to be a little bit of a musical and no thanks. Yeah, it just it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't none of them hit. Hmm. Which is a shame because it's by that John LeJoy guy. Oh, who that used guy. To do YouTube. Yes. Stuff back yes. In the day. It's also on um, the League. Yes, that, the League. That show that was tangentially about fantasy football. Kinda. It was a little bit. Yes. I feel like that's how they got the foot in the door at FX to be like, hey, it's about fantasy football. That's popular, and then they just kind of do whatever they wanted. <laughs> But they're just, just not good songs in a movie that didn't need them. Oh, bummer. And the, there's a meta story like the original, but it's not a... Sur- they can't surprise you with it anymore because right. you already know... You know that they are a- actual toys and not... Yeah. And it right. just it just makes it like... It just seems kind of just like insincere. Mm. It's, it's a really, it really hits you over the head with, hey, like, be nice to your sister. <laughs> I kind, you know, I kind of saw that coming because the whole villain arc, I guess they're the uh, what? What are those Lego sets called with the taller Lego figs? Oh, Lego friends. Lego friends. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, hey, we just spent a lot of money R and Ding this new line of uh, Lego toys for your sister. So be nice to her and let her play with your Legos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That so, does seem fairly insincere. Yeah, it doesn't in the message. come. It doesn't come from the same genuine place that the yeah. first one did. I think. Now, was this uh, Lord and Miller with this one as well? They produced it. I don't produced... think. I don't think they directed it. Well, there's the issue. And I don't remember who directed it, but it's just. Which just wasn't great. Yeah. Okay. It just it just doesn't have the the same heart as the first yeah. one does. It's watchable. It's fine. Yeah, it's a good way to kill an hour and a half. That's for sure. <laughs> you you won't regret it. <laughs> But it got some giggles. Yeah. Like, I mean, it has sewer babies. <laughs> I don't want to explain that. Okay, I'm just yeah, leave just, it at just that. leave that one there. That, <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and we watched uh, Ready or Not, which was very good. I liked it a uh, lot. It was good. The more I think about it, the more I like it, I think. Um, which one was that? That sounds familiar. It's kind of like a horror thriller about a couple who's getting married and she's marrying into a family that made their fortune on board games. They're like super, super rich. Yeah, like mm-hmm. incredibly rich. It looks like the the Clue Mansion. Like it, that's where it seems like this movie takes place is in the Clue Mansion. Okay, okay. Um, But the the night of their wedding at midnight, traditionally they have to play a game that's that's drawn at random from a magic box Mm -hmm. and she pulls hide and seek but their rules of hide and seek are they have to kill her oh so and there were there was a chance that you know it wasn't going to be this one and they just play a regular game like it could be one of them said i got chess and they just played chess but if you get hide and seek apparently that means they have to kill the bride or they will die Huh. So it's all these rich people trying to hunt down this poor girl who is not rich. She's marrying into this family. <laughs> so they're all trying to hunt her down and kill her so they don't die. And uh, it's kind of like a, a dark comedy as well as yeah. a horror movie. It's like, after- it sounds kind of like it. Yeah. yeah. And some of the characters obviously don't really want to kill her, but, you know. Sure. It's, I don't know, it's interesting because you can just see varying degrees of... Yeah, how badly they want 
they want to win or not. Like hmm. somebody they don't believe it, it'll happen. They're not sure. But it's it's a fun concept. Um, it's it's well it's well written and clever. The main actress, uh, Samara Weaving, looks exactly like Margot Robbie. Like to like, the point where we thought it yeah. was Margot Robbie. <laughs> oh, really? But it's not. Like dead on. She's huh. also Australian too. Oh, well, there which you go. Leads me to believe there's some sort of billabong out in the middle of <laughs> Australia somewhere where fully formed Margot Robbie's just come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, it's just a, it's a fun scary movie. It's on. It was on. It's a uh, little gory, but not terribly. There's a couple gross scenes, but it's not. That's, overly... It sounds interesting. Yeah, it's it sounds like an interesting concept for a film. It, it really is. It's fun. Cool. It, it kind of has like a Agatha Christie like, and then they were none kind of feel to it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a mystery, but like, there's definite inspiration from that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. It really is. Yeah. I would call it a dark comedy. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> it's American Parasite. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. cool. Now that was uh, that one is on HBO Max if if you want to watch that. Okay. Which is a pretty good service too. That came out just like a week ago. Yeah. 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 Another another streaming service you can subscribe yeah. to if you want. Yeah. So uh, many of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this one actually has some good stuff though on yeah. it. It's, I'm not sure. If, it just seems like it's not very well organized. Yeah, there's a lot more movies though than you get on YouTube or YouTube, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> there's a lot more movies than you get on like Netflix or Hulu. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of when Netflix was yeah. new and it had a lot had of a bunch movies. of movies. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting to see what they do with. Uh, Doom Patrol season two because that's going to be an HBO Max thing. Yeah, and, and season one is on there. Season I, one's I on there. Okay. That. Yeah, you you need to watch it. I think yeah, I think you guys would like it. It's it's just weird enough. There's a lot of DC stuff on there. Uh, they got first season of Batwoman. Oh, cool. Uh, they've got like a whole bunch of Batman animated movies, like the good uh, Warner Brothers animation. Oh, the good ones. Okay. DVD yeah. Ones. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Speaking of which, I was on uh, went on a weekend vacation thing, and we had cable, so I stayed up and watched uh, Sci Fi Channel and caught some Harley Quinn. And remember the last time, one of the last episodes we did, I mentioned I'm not sure how they're going to get around bleeping out all of the curse words and all the extreme blood and gore and stuff from that show. The answer is they didn't nice. at oh, all. Okay. <laughs> It is full blown f bombs and skulls being broken out of heads huh. and stuff on on a cable. I didn't know you could say that for it on cable. I didn't know that either, but apparently that is the case at least for the Sci Fi Channel at eleven o'clock at night. Huh? Yeah, it was weird. Interesting. I guess that explains why there's a lot of there's f bombs on uh, what we do in the shadows. I thought, oh yeah! I thought it was just because we've been watching it on Hulu and they were allowed to do it there, but maybe they just do it on cable. Maybe too. they've lightened up considerably. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Well, I tell you what. Let's uh, take a break here. When we come back, we'll talk about some more some things that we've been checking out, and then get to some of this news. Hey, we're back. That was Revolution by a, a little band. You may not have heard of them, the Beatles. Little band out of Liverpool. They're going to go far. I, I kind of like them. It's not bad. Yeah, it's kind of catchy. <laughs> kind of catchy. I thought they were called the Silver Beatles. Did they change it? They might. You know, they might have. A drummer's maybe not the best, but everyone else in there is, uh, is pretty is pretty good. Uh, a song played for absolutely no reason nope. whatsoever. Anyway, let's get on to some more check them outs. <laughs> um, what do you want to talk about next? Yeah. Uh, well, we watched... Ma last night if we're continuing on you know horror movies I, I don't know why just lately that's all I've kind of wanted it's, to watch it's, all I can, it's like comforting to me it's weird it's yeah. all I can get her to watch I had, it was like pulling teeth to get you to watch the Lego movie I don't know for some reason it's comforting watch other people go through hell I, what's wrong with me <laughs> This one, mm. this one's Octavia Spencer as like a a middle aged lady who starts letting teenagers drink and party <laughs> in her basement, and she's crazy, and like 
gets attached to these kids and like yes <laughs> yes i haven't watched it i'm not a huge horror movie guy i i got curious and read the wikipedia and the wikipedia <laughs> article is very specific on the entirety of the movie it is wild i feel as though i don't need to see the movie because they were very specific <laughs> I mean, probably not. I mean, it was a good movie that I would recommend. Yeah, she's an but... amazing actress, obviously. Yeah, oh, yeah. Octavia Spencer's great. Yeah, oh, yeah. she falls into these, like, a thousand yard stairs every once in a while in the movie and just like, like oh. Like, not even, she's like, not even, like, the focus of the scene. Like, she's just off to the side and she just has this freaky stare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets, it gets wild. Yeah, um, yeah. It kind of falls back out into her past and her yeah there was some past bullying. trauma on her on her end which caused and yeah she yeah, kind, yeah. Of, kind of goes on a revenge uh revenge mission <laughs> yes yes <laughs> but yeah it's wild and it's worth watching just for her alone yeah well she's a great actress i i, I like i like octavia spencer quite a bit yeah i don't want to spoil it because yeah like, going into it too much that will one's, spoil it yeah just just know that it is in fact buck wild <laughs> and worth a watch yeah well uh one that i have no trouble spoiling is um kind of an older movie i forgot i had watched this up until we started talking about check em outs um i watched uh the majority of uh, an old movie called lady in the lake it's an old it was from 1946 <laughs> it's about a watery tart who throws a sword at you <laughs> yeah that's it yes <laughs> no what it, what it, what it is it's a um it's a it's a crime drama movie. It's like an old Philip Marlowe, like a noir, noirish, a very noirish kind of thing. But it's, it you know, there's double and triple crosses, and it's kind of predictable in that sense. Essentially, um, they find a, a lady murdered in a in a car in a lake or something, and twists and turns. You find out who did it, that sort of thing. The interesting thing about it is, and again, this movie was made in 1946. It was shot in first person. Wow, that's and cool. Entirely in first person. So you are viewing everything as Philip Marlowe in first person. The only time you see the main character, there are a handful of shots where he is looking at himself in a mirror, which is also fascinating because you got to think 1940s cameras are humongous. Yeah. They're filming everything on huge reels. I don't know how they hid the camera so it didn't appear in the mirror reflection of the actor. I'm not sure how they did that. This movie is Witchcraft. 80 yeah. years old and I don't I don't know. <laughs> it's but it's really interesting the way it was hmm. filmed. It's hard, it's hardcore Henry for boomers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, kind of is, but it's just yeah. It sounds cool. <laughs> like, I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah. I always wondered why there wasn't more movies in first person. Like, It'll other than sick. it's, like, really hard and makes people sick. Yeah. Oh, well, that's it makes true. People... It makes people sick in the theater a lot. Well, yeah. That, that, would, was that a... would do it. That might be why... I haven't looked into too much history of this. That might be why they didn't do that for more films in the 1940s. Yeah, when Blair Witch came oh, yeah. out, there was a lot of people there was complaining a lot of, about Yeah, there's nausea. a lot of that. Yeah, because there's a lot of first. Well, it is. It's found footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. There's one shot in this that I really liked. Philip Marlowe gets shot. He gets shot in the side, and it's him in first person crawling in the dirt. You just see one hand over the other crawling in the dirt up to a payphone <laughs> to make a call. That's really cool. And that it's, sounds it's really, awesome. really cool. <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah, I have, to, I, I have to thank my dad for for telling me about this one. We we actually watched a good chunk of it together. It was on. He's been watching a lot of TCM, mm -hmm. which is cool. That's another thing about HBO Max is there's a TCM selections on there. Oh, there is, and really? And there's a whole bunch of like cool looking old movies on there, and like almost all of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies. Oh, are on there. ooh, those are good. Yeah, that's good stuff. Cool. But yeah, now I want to watch that. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> That's what I always like in video games that are in the first person when they're not afraid to like put your put the you know neck down body and arms and stuff on there. Oh yeah, it yeah. always adds an extra layer of immersion. That's not they don't always do that. Sometimes you look down, there's nothing. Down there's there. just there's <laughs> nothing. It's just nothing. Oh, I gotta talk about my new favorite show, Holy Moly. <laughs> okay, it is a is miniature this... golf competition show. That's also a little bit of a uh, wipeout or most extreme elimination challenge at the same time. Oh, that sounds awesome. 
they have contestants. They come in. They got to play mini golf against each other, and then they got to like do run across some dumb obstacle <laughs> to get to their ball on the and other side. They never of the make it. Oh, they almost never make it. <laughs> and if you get knocked into the water or whatever, you get an extra stroke on your oh, your score. Oh man! Oh, this is genius. This it, is genius. It is super duper dumb in like the best way. Oh, yeah. If you're looking for something to like de stress or not think about anything else for a while, I recommend this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Holy moly. It's, it's just stupid fun. There's like two episodes of it on Hulu. It's on its second season, apparently. I've really? never heard of this. Yeah, I'd never heard of it till I saw it the other I day. I think it's just some stupid summer programming they oh, do. Oh, yeah. Time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rob Riggle's one of the commentators, and he's really funny. <laughs> They're acting like pro golf like commentators. Oh, that's awesome! But obviously making jokes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds that sounds so good. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to look that up. That it, is, it, it's such a fantastic, like, brilliant combination of garbage TV. <laughs> <laughs> And they pick like the weirdest people to play because I mean the oh, people sure. that are really good at mini golf. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, sure. Yeah, <laughs> you're just going to call out mini golf people like that. I'm sorry. I feel attacked. Yeah, I've always liked mini golf. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I'm not a professional yeah. mini golf player. <laughs> well, none of them have been. There's been a couple of people who play golf professionally on as <laughs> contestants, but. Like, not a golfer you would know of. Ah, okay. <laughs> but, you know, they had, like, a g- garbage man. Uh, <laughs> a man who referred to himself as Squirrel Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got some characters. They also said he was an artist and entrepreneur. So, in other words, he doesn't have a job. He's unemployed, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like it's, it's just good, and it shouldn't be as good as it is. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds amazing. <laughs> Once we're done recording, I'm going to I'm going to look that up like immediately. Yeah, you might have to try to find the first season somewhere. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. <laughs> and like, was it that Steph Curry's involved somehow for some reason? He's a really? basketball player, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's got there's animated segments with him. Yeah, they didn't really? apparently want to get him in there, or he couldn't afford to. <laughs> And like, yeah, when the winner of each episode, there's a little animated segment where they go and meet Stephon Curry and they get to be animated into the little anima- animated oh, world weird. that he presides it's cute in. cute animation. It's not bad. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's weird, though. That's, huh. That's bizarre. Yeah, sounds like it. And he, like, talks about, like, the a certain hole. Yeah, he, he gives, like, a made-up story about where the ideas for each hole came from. <laughs> I feel like it's just stupid. There but. was one that had like dragons, like statues of dragons on the side, and they make you put on like this big, like, like asbestos suit, and they blow fire at you while you're trying to golf. <laughs> People are like literally <laughs> putting oh while they're wearing god. a cape that's on fire. Oh my like... god! Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, you have to watch it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> And then we watched uh, Uncut Gems, which is on Netflix now, and it, yeah. it was really good. Weird. More weird than I expected. It was the least funny Adam Sandler movie I've <laughs> ever seen. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was a weird, like, kind of character study on this weird gym, like, jewelry salesman that Adam Sandler is playing, and, like, plays him straight. Like, yeah. it's just kind of like, him having a very bad couple of days mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's basically the gist of the movie um and there's just like just enough going on that it's interesting and his acting is is good the I don't music know. stands out it's like synth yeah it's weirdly synth music it's hard it's really hard to describe now that i'm sitting here trying to describe it it's an odd one it's yeah. good but it's 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 just really about this character, kind of a character piece kind of thing. Yeah, no, it's interesting. You know, Sandler he has phoned in an awful lot of films as of late, but when he cares about a about a role, he'll do. He can still act. And there, there's some of his more serious movies where he just like his thing is he gets mad and yells a lot. Yeah, and like I don't like that. That's more on me, though. It makes me 
like secondhand anxious from him yelling well, and being angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't. I don't get this with this one. I mean, he gets mad, but it's not like it's more like a want to speak to your manager, man. Yeah. Oh, I don't, there's just like some scenes in like I think it's Punch Drunk Love. I was gonna. Where s- I'm just like I can't do nope. this. I yeah. know. I don't yeah. want to watch this. <laughs> I've never, I haven't seen that movie all the way through either. I've just seen bits and pieces of it, and I've been like, I don't want, it's, I don't want to do it's this. It's good for one time through. I don't know if I'd ever watch it again, but it's good for one time through. The last, like, ten minutes of Uncut Gems is super, like, intense. Like, oh, yeah. Like, intense sports energy. <laughs> like, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, don't spoil any more for me. I, I, I kind of want to see that. I've been. It's been on my list. I just yeah. haven't, haven't been in the mood it is kind uh, of. I don't. No, it does. I mean, it doesn't tense. ask a whole. It's well, tense, but it doesn't ask a whole lot of you. I've been wanting just light, <laughs> light stuff. You've been in more of a holy moly mood, not I have. <laughs> Jim's mood. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Do we want to hit on the jinx? Since we've mentioned in the past that we wanted to talk about, we could talk about it briefly. The jinx, yeah. sure. The HBO documentary about Robert Durst. Yeah. Who's not the father of Limp Biscuits, Fred Durst. <laughs> First thing I learned about this <laughs> uh, from this doc. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that twist at the end though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Real bomb drop. And then the way they end it just immediately after the big bomb drop mm-hmm. is just like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I liked, I liked that one a lot. I liked yeah. that doc a lot. It, it's about he's... Uh, Robert Durst is su- suspected in a couple murders. A couple of them, And yeah. you spend the whole documentary being like, well, did he do it? It seems like he did it. Maybe he didn't do it. And then a bomb drops at the end, and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. It was kind of the, the Tiger King of its day. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Except not as dumb. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although he's not as big of a character as Joe Exotic either. But yeah. he is a character. He's a weird oh, dude. Yeah. He is. All right. Well, hey, uh, do you want to go ahead and get into a little bit of this news? I, we don't really have a ton, but... Uh, I mean, we can go straight from Tiger King to Tiger King. Let's let's one. go straight from Tiger King to Tiger King. Uh, Carol Baskins. Carol Baskin now owns Joe Exotic's former zoo. Yeah. Kind of a weird turn of events there. I feel like this is Joe Exotic's nightmare. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I I know Baskin will say in any interview, "Oh, it's all about it's about the tigers. Just want to make just want to make sure that there's a good home for the tigers." This is a hundred percent out of spite. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a hundred percent out of spite. <laughs> Do I think that they are in better care now than they were with Jeff Lowe? Absolutely. Yeah. Because I don't think Jeff Lowe has ever cared about tigers not his even, entire life. Not even once. At least for Joe Exotic, there was one time it was about the tigers. For Carol Baskin, it was a, at one time, or maybe still kind of is in her own weird, weird way. way about the tigers. Yeah, Jeff but, Lowe never cared about the tigers. I still think no one should own these tigers no they should they should be in legitimate zoos yes not these like roadside fly by night zoos yeah yeah people should not be paying money to handle them no they are they are wild animals and they should be cared for by professionals if they have to be cared for in captivity at all and a lot of these because they've only lived in captivity they wouldn't survive being released back into the wild. So the zoo, like legitimate zoos would be the best bet option for them. And uh, yeah, but lesser of two evils, I guess Baskin will actually care a little bit more for these animals. People in won't theory. be petting them, I guess. Yeah, well, that's fine. Except I'm... for maybe her. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think that's her thing is that it's all hands off. And that's and that's fine. That's good. That's kind of the way it should be, you know. Slow news week, folks. Yeah. Uh, in <laughs> other news, oh jeez. Game Gear. <laughs> Let's talk about the Game Gear. We could talk about that for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, remember when the the hot thing was to make a smaller version of your old video game system? Yeah. Now Sega's going to do it again, but this time with the Game Gear, which is I guess the first time they did it with a handheld one. Yeah, that's true. They beat Nintendo to the punch there. Yeah. 
Um, except it's like really, really small. Y- yeah. It like fits it literally in the palm of your hand. The screen is about an inch and a half. <laughs> like, why? So that it, seems counterintuitive. Yeah. That seems bad. Uh, but it is only it's only like fifty bucks, which is for these things is cheap. Well, that's not terrible. Does it have any like television connectivity or anything like that, or is it strictly? No. Handheld. Well, then, yeah. I think that's... it's. I think it's more for the novelty of it oh, than anything. Yeah, no, that makes sense. They each only come with four games a really? piece. Oh, that's. And there's like four different colors, and each different color one has four different games on it. Oh, what a scam! Yeah, yeah. Collect them all, folks. Yeah, only two of them have Sonic games, and not even the the best one, which is Sonic Triple Trouble, is the best. Oh, it is Game Gear Sonic. Okay. Um, there's one that's Sonic Chaos, which is like close, a close second mm. to Triple Tr- Trouble, and the other one is just the regular Sonic the Hedgehog, which is it's fine, it's fine, yeah, yeah. Uh, the brief t- point in time that I owned a Game Gear, I had that Sonic, I had that Sonic, and I had Rystar. You remember Rystar yeah. at all? Rystar, Rystar's a sweet game. It's a great game. He's a little star man, and he's got grabby hands, stretchy, gra- stretchy grab hands, and he could swing around a thing and. Turn into a shooting star. Yeah. They should have did more of, of him. But I agree wholeheartedly. I think the time for Rystar is long past, unfortunately. Nobody makes mascot Rystar for Smash. Rice. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> He'd have all kinds of grabs. Yeah. It'd work. Everybody'd be like, who's that? Why? Well, that's what everybody thought about Terry, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> all the kids were like, who's Terry? Is this Ash's dad? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he kind of looks like he could. He, be. he does, yeah. I need a Samurai Showdown guy in Smash. Yeah, Sam Show would be good. Who? I mean, Homaru. Homaru would be is the obvious choice. Um, Yukio, uh, the the blue hair guy with tuberculosis. Yeah, the blue hair guy would be good. Is uh, that's Sh- Charlotte is in that one as? Yeah, yeah. She just. Although I can hear it already, it's another sword. It's person, another anime sword person, which is all Samurai Showdown is is sword people. Well, uh, oh, Cham Cham, well, Cham Cham has a big boomerang. There's Earthquake. He has the ball and chain. Oh, the ball, yeah. And then there's the tiny Freddy Krueger man. Tiny Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They put him in Smash. Everybody will be thrilled. <laughs> What's his Chang? Chang? I think his name's Chang. Oh, no, that's, th- those are from Chang and Choi are from King of Fighters. King of Fighters. Whoops. Oh well. Yeah. Oh well. Whatever. It's <laughs> it's the same character basically. That's what I, I want. The next Smash Brothers character to be whoever will make people the most angry. At yes, at this point, sure. Which I would have said another Fire Emblem character would be that, but that's what they did last time. That's, so they just did that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, who would they make? Who would? make people the most angry who would be the worst choice <laughs> pink gold peach <laughs> yeah there we go oh, the worst smash brothers character so it's got to be something that is both unrecognizable at first and also for the folks who would recognize it to make them reactively go boring Ugh. yeah like another link another link sure because he's also he's a sword guy yeah. there's already three other links there is. They could do so much more with Zelda characters, and they've just really phoned in all of those. I would say a Goron. Yeah, I, I would think that was cool. But... I would see. I would also think that is cool, but it's not descript enough. And, and he, he also, would have a lot of Link's moves he, and also Sonic's moves. Yeah, it would just be a <laughs> Sonic Link clone. Yeah, I want it to be Mike Jones from Star Tropics. I know you've you've been pushing Mike Jones from Star Tropics which, for a while. Weird yeah. thing, the Nintendo Power podcast, which is not good, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't oh, recommend I've, anybody listen. I've tried to. listening to it; it's not great. They did an episode about Star Tropics really? recently, like a game club style. Everybody plays Star Tropics on your Switch, and then we talk about it. I didn't listen to it because the podcast it's not is a bad good show. Yeah, but it was weird to see Nintendo acknowledge that the game exists in an official capacity oh that that's weird yeah like it seems like the it got on the switch by accident somehow. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know who would be the worst one bald bull from punch out oh that'd be awesome though <laughs> really i love punch Out because though. it would be a second boxer character but not king hippo who everyone wants yeah that's true 
and it's not Super Macho Man. <laughs> Because he would be the Dan of yeah. of Smash Brothers. Bald Bull would have a, a point where during a move, if you hit him right, he would instantly die. He'd just crumple and, <laughs> crumple and die. He'd just yeah. fly off the stage. Piston Hondo. <laughs> yeah, Glass Joe. Well, yeah, Glass Joe. There you go. Or Gabby J. <laughs> who, I was watching somebody play Super Punch-Out on YouTube. I think it was... Is it Matt McMuscles? Because he McMuscles. just put one up the other day. I it, watched it as well. It, it dawned on me that Gabby J is just old man Luigi. He is. Yeah. Like he sounds like Luigi mm-hmm. and he kind of just looks like an aged he, Luigi. He's nervous and sad and <laughs> yeah. just doesn't want to be there anymore. <laughs> let's do another news story. Yeah, let's do it. The Pokemon DLC is coming out soon. It is. Uh, yeah. Just that... out of nowhere, they announced June 17th. So the... a couple weeks. Isle of Armor? Is that the first Isle of is? Armor, yeah. So, so the uh, first half of the two-part DLC. That's adding a bunch of car- uh, Pokemans from previous games, a couple of new versions of Pokemans. All those Pokemon everybody was so mad about. Oh, that seems quaint now, doesn't it? it? it <laughs> Remember <laughs> when that was the biggest problem? Yeah, that was what everybody was mad about, was the fact that there was some Pokemon missing from a game. A simpler time. Yeah. <laughs> well, a good majority of those missing Pokemon are coming back. A good chunk of them. And if, if not in this one, then in the next one. But no, I am I am excited for this. I'm ready to jump back into Pokemon. I've been kind of spinning my wheels with Animal Crossing. I finally hit five-star uh, top rating on that on my town. So nice. like, oh, I've been fighting with that the past three or four days oh it's frustrating it's just like okay more furniture outside okay more furniture outside now you want a fence there's so many fences already you can om- you can almost not walk in my town because there are so many flowers <laughs> <laughs> do not run anywhere do not run I will, anywhere i will walk. kill you <laughs> yeah i i have a five-star rating by this much yeah. that's it just this much no <laughs> Uh, but no, I've been spinning my wheels with that, and I've been kind of bumming around on like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that, just kind of spinning, waiting for Pokemon to start back up. Because I I've been itching to jump back in, and this is kind of a good time for it. Yeah, I I feel like I should be more excited for it than I am, but I think it's just the fact that Sword and Shield was just okay. Yeah, I don't, that's even that's too hard. It was better than okay, but it wasn't. It I, wasn't X and Y. Right. X and Y was. Maybe the lowest point. And I mean, I like the different Pokemon from X and Y, but the story was... Oh, God, it was garbage. Yeah. Oh, no, not X and Y. Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon was the one that I didn't care for. X and, oh. X and Y is the French one. Sun and Moon is the Hawaiian one where it seems like they gave up three quarters of the way into <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, which is exactly where I stopped playing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to stop making the game three quarters of the way through, why do, why continue playing it? I, and I, the thing I is, it was really fun up until that point, uh, yeah, too. Yeah, and then you get to that last island, and it's like, oh, the one trainer on that island is like, oh, well, you, you could just have my yeah. thing. This this island's really underdeveloped. We haven't started building stuff here yet. It's like, well, that means then there's nothing to do. <laughs> there's, yeah, then then I guess we're done here. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but no, I'm interested to see where this DLC goes and see what kind of features it adds into it. I can't wait for you to finish the main game of Pokemon so that you get to the post game of the main game, including that those two idiots who have sword and shield shaped hair. <laughs> I just need to beat Leon. I only tried once and he stomped me so hard. <laughs> It basically ejected me from the game. <laughs> Your soul left. Yeah. It might as well have just deleted the game off of my Switch when I lost so bad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to jumping back in. It'll be fun. Uh, we have time for one very quick one. Maybe, okay, a follow-up to AMC. We talked about their theaters might be in trouble, and... Update, they're still in trouble. <laughs> Except now it's even more serious. It's more serious, yeah. What was the uh, stipulation that you had said? Uh, well, thanks to no theaters being open for like three months, mm-hmm. um, they're saying that if there isn't new movies to show, in, if they can't open up this month and there's no movies to show this month either, they're probably going to go out of business. Yeah, that is that is a shame. Um I still 
suspect someone like Amazon is going to swoop in and buy them because when they're when they're at their absolute cheapest. But yeah, that's I mean, maybe this will give rise to more privately owned theaters because you're going to have a bunch of theaters that were going to otherwise be empty but have like all the facilities ready for some for private investors yeah. to come in and And the, those theaters run them. are more fun anyway. They are. You have more fun going to a studio Studio 35, 35 or a Grand View or theaters. Gateway something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I I agree. I hope they I hope more private theaters open up because of this. I kind of I'm okay with spending an extra buck or two to go to a yeah. privately owned theater. And even AMC mm. isn't even one of the better chains. No, either. Marcus. I I'd kidding? rather go to a Marcus. Yeah. Sure. Even Cinemark. Yeah, is even better. Cinemark. Yeah, yeah. All right, well hey, we have hit time, so let's go ahead and wrap things up. <laughs> now that we've thoroughly burnt AMC to the ground. <laughs> you burnt. We got gotcha. you. The only thing I don't like about the Marcus is the is Greg Marcus's Gre- smug <laughs> interstitials before the oh, movie. Oh yeah, starts. yeah. Hi. Welcome to my home. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming into my house and watching my movies. I'm Greg Marcus. No. So, uh, yeah, you've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can also check (laughs) us out on various social medias, uh, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, or Instagram at Nerd Overload Now. You can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. You can give us a call on the Nerd Overload hotline. Leave us a voicemail about uh, what's your favorite place to see a movie. Uh, the number for that is 586-372-8020. That's right. You can also find all of our back episodes on various podcast catchers like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. And finally, I'd like to thank David Pencil for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his stuff over at davidpencil.com. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Give us a call on the hotline. I double dare you. <laughs> <laughs>